in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, I speak. Now, for this uh, session, yeah, we are going to continue with our study on the uh, doctrines of baptism. Now, last night we have gone through some of the passages concerning baptism must be done in the name of Jesus. Right? We know that the mode of baptism is essentially important yeah, for salvation. And we also realize without which none of us uh, can have our sin forgiven in baptism. Now, you know, the next one we want to talk about is like uh, uh, head bowing down in baptism. You know, some may question uh, why we are so stringent about it. You know, why do we have to uh, follow exactly, you know, like uh, what Jesus Christ uh, has shown, uh, you know. Now, I think the reasoning here is very simple. Yeah? First, we are sinners ourselves, and we have no right yeah, to challenge, you know, the authority of God. If this is what uh, God has given to us, then obviously none of us yeah, is in any position to say that why should we do this or do that? Because after all, we are sinners. We are require God's salvation to be saved. Okay? Now, so... I think looking at, uh, you know, uh, bowing head in baptism from this standpoint, then obviously it becomes essential, you know, for us to follow uh, uh, what the Bible has said. Now, we know that when we perform baptism, the mode of baptism, meaning the way baptism is done, must be strictly followed according to the Scriptures. Now, baptism must be done in the name of Jesus, which we mentioned uh, yesterday, so today, yeah, we are going to first look at uh, two passages from the Scriptures. Okay, we turn to, uh, uh, first we read the uh, Romans, the book of Romans, yeah. Uh, please turn to the book of Romans, chapter 6. Okay, we can read from verse 3 to verse 5, yeah? <clears throat> now here, <clears throat> it talks about the entire process of being baptized, yeah? <clears throat> okay, verse 3. Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into His death? All right? Now, so, verse 4, Therefore we were buried with Him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Now, this is the entire process, but verse 5 talks about two points. That is, the starting point and the points of conclusion. Now, the starting point is, yeah, For if we have been united together in the likeness of His death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of His resurrection. So, the two points here is about how uh, we should be baptized, and that is, we need to understand the likeness of His death. Now, what, when we talk about likeness, obviously likeness is something visible, something that we can see, something that we can imitate, that is called likeness. Right? Now, so, the, con the point of conclusion is, so that we can be raised in the likeness of His resurrection, meaning we can be raised in the power of His resurrection. Right? Now, when we, raise, when we rise up from the water, right, that is the what? Uh, the point of uh, being raised from uh, the dead. Now, the key point here is, you must first become united in the likeness of His resurrection. That is the thing that we can do yeah? But you find that the likeness of His resurrection is accomplished, is, is accomplished through Christ. Okay? Because when we are in, baptized into His death, into His burial, then obviously we will be raised what, together with his, in His resurrection. So we shouldn't be too concerned about you know, the likeness of His resurrection. What we should be concerned about is the likeness of His death. Right? And this is the point that we need to do. Yeah? Now, so we look at uh, uh, John. Turn to John, yeah? 
uh, chapter 19. John chapter 19. Yes, we read uh, verse 30, uh, 3 0. So, John chapter 19, verse 30, 3 0. So, when Jesus has received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. <clears throat> now, so he gave up his spirit, yeah? Okay. Now, think about this, yeah? Some people might say, yeah? Why is this verse so important? Yeah? How do we know that this is concerned uh, with our salvation? Now, I want you to first understand, you know, as we are going through the book of John, yeah, in our lessons, I want you to also read uh, chapter 21. Yeah, turn to chapter 21. Now, I want you to read uh, verse 24, yeah? Verse 24. Now, this is the disciple who testified of these things and wrote these things, and we know that his testimony is true. Now, you find that this is the disciple, John, okay? Now, he first talked about, uh, you know, the, the, the incidents uh, uh, leading up to the crucifixion of Jesus, and then later on, uh, his resurrection, yeah? Actually, start from where? Chapter... 18. Am I right? Yeah, chapter 18. Right? Now, so here it says his testimony is true. Even when Christ was pierced, isn't it? He said the testimony is true. Now, before he died, what did he do? He bowed his head. He bowed his head, yeah? Now, and also, I want you to understand, we read uh, verse 25 as well. And there are also many other things that Jesus did, which if they were written one by one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. Amen. Now, so it's saying that whatever is written in the Gospel of John is very important. Otherwise, you know, they would not have been included. Now, so including what? The bowing of head. Does it make sense now? Yeah, if it is not important, it would not have been included. So, since bowing of head has been included in the book of John, meaning that it is important. <coughs> now, with this, we're back to John uh, chapter 19. Hmm. Okay, John chapter 19. <coughs> here we find that there are two things mentioned here before he died. What is that? First, he bowed his head. If you read the English version, what does it say? <clears throat> Still bowing, isn't it? Bowing his head, and then what happened? He gave up his spirit. Gave up his spirit. Now, which one came first? Bowing. bowing his head, isn't it? Now, so unlike, you know, unlike some people said, yeah, you know, because Jesus, you know, uh, you know, after he died, yeah, that's why his head dropped. So that is not true, you know. He bowed his head first. While bowing, and then he gave up the spirit. Now, so bowing came first. <coughs> this, these are the, like the last two things that he did. Bowing came first, and then followed by what? Giving up his spirit. So, you know, the, the, the first, yeah, if, if we said these are the two uh, last things that Jesus did, the first one lasted longer than the second. You get what I'm saying? Yes, in the course of bowing, he gave us his spirit, means he died. This is how he entered into his own de into death. You understand what I'm saying? Now, we need to understand by what we study in uh, John uh, chapter 10. We turn to John chapter 10, yeah? Now, please turn to John chapter 10. We read uh, verse 18, yeah? Here it talks about Jesus Christ laying down his life. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This command I have received from my Father. Meaning, crucifixion itself cannot kill Jesus. 
Right? That's why the Bible says what? He bowed his head. That is like he willingly laid down his life and then he gave up his spirit. That's the point, eh? You know, right? Uh, John is making. Now, <clears throat> coming back to uh, head bowed again, yeah? Now, so that's why some people said, you know, uh, when a person uh, is crucified on the cross, obviously you find that, you know, you know, the cross, yeah, with the, the, the vertical, uh, you know, plank, obviously, put, uh, you know, it's like uh, going upward, yeah, higher than the head. You understand what I'm saying? Right? So, Jesus only has one, one direction, yeah, to, to, to bow his head. Right? One way to move his head, that is to bow forward. And it is not possible, but for him to lift up his head because of the cross. Okay? Now, so it is only natural, some people said, when Jesus Christ was like exerted all his strength, it is only a natural one. For, it is only natural for him to, to face forward, isn't it? To go this direction. Right? But again, when you look at this, yeah, when you look at this very closely, it is not. And that is a voluntary gesture. He bowed his head first and then he gave up his spirit. Like what we said, no one can kill him, not even crucifixion. Yeah? Willingly, he laid down his life for us. That is the likeness of his death. This is what Paul is talking about. Right? Now, you, can, you, you need to pay atten- uh, look at this very closely. Yeah? Right? According to Romans, the Bible says when a person is baptized, he is baptized into his death. So that is how Jesus entered into death. And that is exactly the posture that we need to follow. That's why we bow our head. Right? It's not because of gravitational pull. That's why Jesus dropped his head. It's not dropping. The Bible says he bowed his head. Now dropping his head is different from bowing his head. Dropping means a person has used up all his energy and he could not hold his neck anymore and the strength has, has been drained away and the only way, the only way forward for him is to drop the head. But that is not the way. That is not, truly is not the way. You understand what I'm saying now? Is that clear? Right? So, this is, this is the process yeah, that we must go through. All right? Enter into his death by bowing head. Otherwise, we miss the opportunity of entering into his, his, his death. Now, so, so some people might question, is there a need? Is there a need yeah, for us to be so uh, rigid or... Why do we need to follow, you know, exactly, you know, like what the Bible says? That's the main point, yeah? Now, I want to, to, to use two examples. I think I mentioned before, maybe some of you here have not heard about these two examples. Uh, the first one is, uh, if you look at the example given in the Old Testament Scriptures, Naaman, you know Naaman? He was a leper, yeah? He was the general of Syria. Now, so he came to know about what? The God of Israel uh, through a, a, a small girl from Israel who was captured by the Syrian army. Right? Now, through obviously through his wife, yeah, he came to know about the prophet in Israel, Elisha at the time. What did Elijah said to him? Elijah did not come even come out to meet him, you know, when he came around. He's, Elijah said to him what? Go to River Jordan and dip yourself seven times. Now we question, why seven times? Why not six? Why not why not five? Why not four? Yeah? Why seven? Exact obedience. You cannot question. You cannot challenge. Initially, he was furious. But his servant said, please, please, please. Since it is the prophet who spoke to you, then you have to listen to the voice of the prophet. All right? Now, so he humbled himself and he went to what? Actually, it's true, you know. The rivers in Syria, you know, probably were cleaner, much cleaner than River Jordan. Right? Why then? Obviously, you know, you know, at that time, you know, this uh, who is that? And Naaman was saying, "Why should I do that? Why should I follow?" But when he, when he you know, listened to the voice of his servant, and he hum- humbly, he sub- you know, he dipped himself seven times in the River Jordan, he was cleansed. But when he was raised on the sixth, was he cleansed? No. Meaning, you have to follow exactly. Seven means seven. Seven does not mean six. Right? 
and River Jordan mean River Jordan. You have to go to River Jordan to do it. So in terms of salvation, yeah, <clears throat> from the Old Testament, this cleansing of lep- leprosy is likened to the cleansing of sin. Because leprosy can prefigure sin. Am I right? So without this total submission on the part of whoever, the recipient of grace, yeah, then you find that this blessing will not be given to him. All right, now the, the other one is, uh, I think we have talked about this uh, in, uh, in John chapter 9. We can look at it there. Uh, during our lesson, we mentioned this. <coughs> Now, John chapter 9. Now, you see that the blind man here, he was born blind. Now, what did Jesus uh, do to him? He spat on the, on, the, on the ground and took some spittle and rubbed on his face and said, What? You, go to the pool of Siloam and to wash your, your face. Did he follow? 100%. So, what happened? He received his sight. That's the way. Right now, likewise, well, we cannot say what is this bowing or not bowing. What's what's so what a what a big deal about this? You can't challenge, you know. And the Bible clearly tells us this is the way for us to enter into Christ's death. If we don't do that, then we miss the point of entering. Now, I want to mention one more point here. Yeah? You know, today, you know, some people may challenge, yeah? may challenge by saying, "You know, look, where where is Jesus? How can you enter into His death? This is only symbolic." Why do you want to follow so strictly? Okay? Now, how, how can, tell me, how can you enter into Christ's death? How? Where is His death? This is only a symbol. You don't have to follow it exactly. Okay? Now, we need to understand this, yeah? <clears throat> I want you to read the Romans. Now, Romans chapter 8. We turn to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Now we read uh, <clears throat> verse 11. <clears throat> Romans chapter 8, verse 11. Yeah? But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to you to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in, in you. Now, here it talks about the work of the Holy Spirit, you know, in raising Jesus from the dead. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah? <clears throat> so the entire process of entering into the death of Jesus is a spiritual experience. And it is done by the Holy Spirit. You get what I'm saying? Yeah? This is no longer something physical. So when we talk about the forgiveness of sin, yeah, you know, how do we know our sins are forgiven? We know that our sins are forgiven precisely because our baptism, first, is in accordance to the Scriptures, and secondly, with the presence of the Holy Spirit, the blood of Jesus Christ is made available. Right? And so obviously, the Holy Spirit has the power to transport us back to the death of Jesus, if you like. Right? Now, the Holy Spirit can do all things, including ushering us into the death of Jesus Christ. Okay, so by entering into His death through the Holy Spirit, that's why what? We first need to follow strictly what the Bible says, bow our head. And this is what we can do. Right? And then the rest, the Spirit will do for us. Okay, this is, uh, I think, is a, is, a, is a key point yeah, that uh, we, can, we can see yeah, based on, you know, uh, what the Bible says, all right? Now, so that's why in the true church, in the TJC, we believe in this. Without the Holy Spirit, nothing can be done. It's not about men. It's not about me. It's not about anyone. It's about the Holy Spirit. Yeah, for the Holy Spirit to work, then obviously we must follow what the Bible says. Okay? So, I think it's important, yeah, for you to explain head bow in baptism, you need to mention about entering into His death. Without head bow, there is no entering into His death. That is the likeness of His death. 
So by bowing our heads, we are willing to follow the likeness of His death and thereby enter into His death. And that is that can only be achieved by the Holy Spirit. Is that clear? That's why it's just like, you know, the Holy Communion, eh? the Holy Communion in the true Jesus Church. Now, when Jesus, when Jesus has blessed the, the bread, what, is, what, what did He say? This is my body. And after He's blessed the cup, what did He say? This is my blood. How, how could He be so certain? Because of the Holy Spirit. Today we are so certain because of the Holy Spirit. Physically, it remains, what, a piece of bread? But in the Spirit, it is the body of Christ. And this is the work of the Holy Spirit. That's why, that's why we believe in this. Without the Holy Spirit, we don't need to talk about the church. Forget it. There's no church. Without the Holy Spirit, we do not know the truth. Simple as that. No one can know the truth without the Holy Spirit. Today, it's not because we are better than other people outside there. It's just that the Spirit has revealed the truth to us first. Right? And this truth must be preached to other people. That's it. It's okay. Now, the other point yeah, concerning uh, uh, bowing head yeah, is, is this. Yeah? <clears throat> you know, when you look at the posture of a, of a penitent, someone who has sinned against God, yeah? you know, it is always right for him what, to, to show humility by bowing his head, isn't it? I think, I think who is this? Who is this guy? Uh, uh, David, he said his, his sin is, is, he has committed so much sin, it's like, hey? Okay, 40? 40, 40, 40, 12. Okay, we turn to Psalms, yeah? Chapter 40, verse 12. Hmm. Verse 12, yeah? Now, for innumerable evils have surrounded me, my iniquity have overtaken me, so that I'm not able to look up. They are more than the hairs of my head. Therefore, my heart fall, uh, fails me. Right? Now, so you find that, yeah? Even, you know, this uh, David uh, understand when he was, uh, what? Uh, filled with sin, uh, he could not live up his head. We are sinners, you know? You know, in baptism, this is the right posture, you know, to show humility before God. This is how we should do it. You know, we always say, it's like if we have a kid or whatever, or if someone has offended you, you know, to come to you, but with his head, you know, like this, in this way. Can you forgive, Can you forgive him? Do you think you want to forgive this person? Or even this person say, forgive me, do you think he's sincere? Unlikely, isn't it? So, only what? This way. Right? That it, it, it present or it give it give the I mean the the, 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 the impressions of, of the humility of the person, yeah. Okay, now I want you to turn to what is that? Luke, yeah? the gospel of Luke. Gospel of Luke we read uh, chapter eighteen. <clears throat> Now, Luke chapter 18, you know the parable of the tax collectors yeah, and uh, what? The Pharisees. Yeah? Look at the way, just focus on the tax collector. Uh, when he, he we prayed, yeah? what did he do? Okay, we read uh, verse 13. Yeah? Chapter 18, verse 13. And the tax collector, standing afar off, would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Can you see? Right now, so if you are a sinner, if you know, when, when we come before Christ yeah, for baptism, we are all sinners. Is that not true? And how dare we live our head like this? To live up. No, it's not correct. You, you find it in the Bible. All the example given huh, are facing forward. None. None. 
you cannot find one. Yeah, we say that a sinner, you know, lifted his up his head. Lifted up his head. No. Not even one. Okay? So these are some of the key points that we uh, we can think about when we talk about uh, head bound in baptism. Right, any other example? Any any other point you want to add on to this? Any point? Anyone? According to verse, uh, verse 5 in Romans chapter 6, it says that when we are baptized in the likeness of his death, then we can have the benefit of being raised in the likeness of his resurrection. And this raising is raising us from our trespasses and our sins. According to uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 to 6. One okay, read. Don't worry. <coughs> Efficient. Chapter one. Chapter okay. One. Six. And you, the male alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world. According to the uh, according to the prince of the power of the earth, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of, the, of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the father. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, with Christ, by grace you have been saved, and raised us up together and made, made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So, uh, by receiving Water baptism with head bow in the likeness of the death of Jesus Christ will make us to be obedient to his teachings, his word, and also to be a humility towards him. And then we, he, will, he will do what? He will forgive our sins and raise us from our trespasses and our, uh, our sins. Especially if verse 2 says, then um, the spirit that works in the children of or sons of disobedience. So if we know that we were disobedient people, when we come to God, we need to obey Him so that we will be able to see that. That is for our Okay, now I, I think this is a it's a very good passage. Yeah? If, we, if we can tie it in uh, to uh, what we have just said, uh, obviously it is like a uh, this is in support of uh, baptism, not just baptism. Yeah? If you look at if you look at verse six, yeah, uh, verse five, yeah, even when we were dead in trespasses, okay, made us to alive together with Christ. Now, you see the process is is talking about what is you are dead together with Christ, and then 
you rise, you, you, you are made alive together with Christ. Okay? Now, so, that's why we have been mentioning uh, earlier on, this is the work of the Holy Spirit. It's not a symbol. It's not something unachievable. It's achievable with the Holy Spirit. Of course, if we just do it by ourselves without the Spirit, then we can never reach that. Right? Now, so when you read verse 5, we say, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us together, uh, as us, made us alive together with Christ. Together, you know. Now, I think we need to understand that. Yeah? That's why the Bible says, when we are baptized, we are baptized into His death, inside His death. Yeah? When we are buried, we are buried inside His burial. It's not like we are being buried side by side with Christ. No. Because we are entered into His death, therefore we are buried in His burial. So when we are raised, we raised together with Him because we are raised in His resurrection. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. Is that, is that okay? Yeah? So, I think it's quite clear. Okay. Now, so, I think, I think when we come to uh, uh, full immersion, yeah, baptism must be done in full, full immersion, then we can uh, look at a bit more closely, you know, uh, uh, at uh, Romans chapter 6 verse 4 and then Colossians chapter 2 verse 12. Well, we'll, we'll look at that more, more closely. Yeah. Okay, now if there isn't any further questions, then we move on to the next, next uh, things that we want to talk about is must be fully immersed into uh, the living water. Now, we need to understand when we look at the word baptism, you know, baptism is a, tran is a, a transliterated word. By that I mean, it's actually is a word borrowed one from the Greek. Now, so you, you find that baptism, baptismo, baptizo, actually it sounds similar. So the English, you know, when, when, it, the, when the English language first adopted this word, it's by the sound of the original words, right? That's why it's called transliteration. Okay, so it, it borrowed yeah, from the Greek now. You find that if you are a Greek person, you know, uh, to understand the word baptism will not be a, a problem because you know exactly what it means, what it uh, uh, covers. All right? Now, so in the original uh, meaning, there are two things at least. Yeah? The first is what? Mean? To be baptized means you need to be submerged into the water, dip into the water. That's the first one. Yeah? The second one, when you look at, you know, a shirt, yeah? When you... When you put it into the water, you soak it, and then if you were to put on dyes, what happens? You find that the shirt will, will take on the dyes that you put, put, put in, the color. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah? So that's why the Bible also tells us baptism is to be baptized into Christ and also to put on Christ. That's the idea. All right? You understand what I'm saying? All right? So there are two meanings. First, you must be immersed into the water. That's the meaning. Second, you put on something. You put on something. Just like a piece of cloth, yeah, being thrown into the water and add dyes or colors on it, and so the, the, the cloth will take on the color that we have put in. That's the meaning. Right? Now, so there is no contention for that. Yeah? If you look up the word itself, you check the dictionary or whatever, right? you find that that's the meaning. That's the meaning. All right? All right, now, the next thing is, uh, I want you to now go to uh, uh, Romans chapter 6. We go to Romans chapter 6. Uh, Romans chapter 6, yeah? We read uh, verse 4. Romans chapter 6, verse 4. Therefore we were buried with Him through baptism into death. Yeah? Buried with Him. So you find that how, how can a person be buried with Christ? It's through baptism. Now what does that mean to you? It means that baptism must be fully covered with water. Otherwise how can you say a person is buried? All right, if, you, if, you, if you were to bury your dad, you, you can't just leave the head, you know, sticking out, the hands or the, the limbs or whatever, or part of the body yeah, uncovered. That is not burial. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? So to be buried means what? You must cover the entire body with, with earth. That is buried, isn't it? That is a burial. But this is the idea given in the Bible. So the word, even if you do not know the original meaning of the word baptism, by looking at verse 4, yeah, you should be able to what? deduce the meaning based on verse 4. Based on verse 4. Right? Okay? Now, so I also want you to look at uh, Colossians. Please turn to Colossians. Colossians chapter 2. <clears throat> now we read uh, verse 12. Colossians chapter 2, verse 12. <clears throat> now, buried with him in baptism, in which you also were raised with him through faith in the working of God. Now, so again it says what? Buried with him in baptism, in which you also were raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. <clears throat> through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. Now, so you find that yeah, if you are not buried, then you cannot be raised. Right? Now, so to be submerged into the water is so important. Now, here it says, have faith what? Faith in what? Faith in the working of God. Now, what is that working of God? If you look at Jesus, what, what work has God done on Jesus? He raised him from the dead, isn't it? And that is the power of the Holy Spirit according to Romans chapter 8. Right? Now, so, when we say we believe in Jesus, what does that mean? We believe in His... Believe in Jesus, meaning He is the only Savior. We believe in His Word, the Word that He has spoken. And in this context, we must believe in the process of being raised with Christ. You need to have faith in that. When you have faith in this, in, in the process of baptism, that obviously your sin will be forgiven. That is the prescription of Christ. We cannot challenge. Who are we to say that this is only a symbol, not important? When we see that the Bible, where we see that the Bible clearly tells us this is for the remission of sin. Right? Now, so faith goes beyond what? Just like, you know, something in your mind, just like believing the oh. Jesus is my Savior who has died for me 2,000 years ago. It has to go beyond that. Beyond meaning we must believe in His Word, in the process or in the prescription that He has given to us for the remission of sin. But this is our faith. This is my faith. You know, I'm, I, I wonder if I've told you this testimony before. You know, when I was in Kenya... When I was in Kenya, we, we did baptism, yeah? And we did baptism. What happened was, you know, the day I arrived there, you know, the, the local church yeah, said, oh, I said, uh, Pastor, you know, there are many people who wanted to get baptized. So I asked them, have you, have you spoken to them before? He said, yeah, 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 we have always spoken to them. So little did I know that actually amongst them, three of them were demon-possessed. I did not know. I did not know at all. Okay? So now what happened? So we asked them to kill up. You know, it's strange, yeah? You know, all of them actually were like ladies. The spirit, mute spirit were in the ladies. I think three ladies, yeah? And they were not, 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 not like big size, you know, very, very uh, uh, skinny, slim. Okay, not skinny, slim. All right? So we started, by, you know, the deacon, who is now the deacon, yeah? He was helping me, the local deacon. And he is... He is strong, you know. So we baptize. In the name of Jesus, I baptize you for the remission of sin. You know, enter into the water, head bowed down, fully submerged, and then come up. And then we came to the first lady who was demon-possessed. I did not know. So what happened when I baptized, and suddenly when she entered into the water, and she began to convulse in the water, and the force was so strong that it almost pushed, you know, the deacon, you know, away. And he almost fell into the water, like, like, you know, how can I put it? Like, you know, backward, or backwards, yeah? But, but thankfully, he managed to stab, stabilize himself. 
And I didn't know I had, I've never seen this before in my life. I just feel that there is a false state. Again, I just, I just ignore it, continue. And then the second one, came to the second one, the same thing happened. Same thing happened. She convulsed in the, in the water so strong, and then I, I realized there was a force from the water came out. Boom! Came out. And then I know it's, it's, it's evil spirit. And the third also. You know why? Why is it that the evil spirit came out? Because when you are baptized, you die with Christ. Yeah? Your sins are forgiven. When your sins are forgiven, you enter into Christ and demon what? Cannot go into the body of Christ. Because this is the church, the kingdom of God. That's why demon has to come out. You know, thank, thankfully, after the baptism, when we look at the three uh, you know, sisters, they were all, norm they were all normal. Perfectly, perfectly fine. So what does that tell us about? It means that the, the baptism practiced by the true Jesus Church is according to the, the Bible. And the presence of the Holy Spirit is there. Even demon has to flee. You know, I'm, I'm wondering, why did God show this to us? To tell us that the baptism that we, 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 we preach and the baptism that we practice is correct. Full immersion is correct. That's why we are very thankful to God. Yeah? So that's why in our ministry work, uh, there are so many you know, miracles of this nature. You know, it's like God is trying to tell us, look, this is the correct one, this is the correct one. Because what we have been doing, what we have been preaching, is according to the Bible. And also, the church has the presence of the Holy Spirit. You know, it's nothing to do with men. Again, I stress, it's the power of the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit is not here, then we can do nothing. It's pointless. Even you immerse yourself hundred times, it's useless. Sins will not be forgiven. Right? Okay, now we come back, yeah? Now, some people said, yeah, some people said, you know, how, how do you know that, uh, like, you know, like Jesus, when he was baptized, was he immersed into the water? Okay, I just want you to read a verse, yeah, to think about this. Okay, I want you to look at Matthew, yeah, Matthew. Now, Matthew chapter 3. Now, chapter 3, verse 16. Yeah, chapter 3, verse 16. Now, when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. Okay? Now, behold, the heavens were open. Okay, now, I just want you to look at this, yeah? He came up out of the water immediately, immediately. Now, you can imagine, if Jesus was baptized facing up, what, can he, can he, can he do that by himself? No. Someone must help him, isn't it? But here he said, you know, we have already proved that baptism is full immersion. So, the only way to confirm what is, when he came out from the water, he must have been baptized facing forward and full immersion. That's why he can come out from the water. You understand what I'm saying? Head bow, forward, and full immersion. Come on. Hmm. Wake up straight away. Woke up. Went up. Went up. Oh, went up. It's, it's, it's the same. Immediately. It's the same. Now, uh, the other thing is, yeah, the other thing is, even if we, uh, we look at the like, um, this one, Acts of the Apostle, chapter 8, yeah? you know, Philip baptized the Ethiopian eunuch. Much water, where there's much water, and he baptized him in the city. And both of them came up from the water. Now, some people said there is no mention of full immersion, but we know the word baptism is mentioned. The word baptism in the original text means what? Submersion. That's it. You can't argue against that. You cannot argue against that. 
That's the meaning. All right, now, one other thing, yeah? This is historical thing. I'm not sure if you have heard about the 12 Apostles' writing. It's called Didach or Didachi. You know, if you trace the, the 12 Apostles' writing, one of the things is this, yeah? Is what? When they baptize people, what? They baptize in, in a fully immersed manner. And also they baptize in living water. You can trace that. Okay, so it's, it's not it's not a, it's not a, a, a problem, yeah. Now, so any question on this? Full immersion, full immersion. You you know. Right. Mark chapter one verse One ten. Okay, so this is uh, what uh, um, full immersion, all right? Now, so you find that, yeah, you know. Sorry, I have a question. Yeah. Can I? Yes, yes, go ahead. Sorry, Romans chapter six, verse four hmm. says, "Therefore, we are buried with him and baptism, baptism and death. We are buried with him." Hmm. Hmm. The mainstream were uh, I understand the position hmm. of gay barn, uh, but the mainstream church's position on baptism uh, baptized in this way is uh, to identify with the barrier hmm. and the airplane is hmm. we don't bury a dead this way. Hmm. Bury a dead person is peace and hope. Hmm. No, I think you are saying, you are saying, you know, uh, churches baptizing this way is to identify what? The barrier. The barrier. Okay. Okay, now I just want to ask you a question, yeah? Now, if you look at this section of the scriptures very closely, does it talk about the likeness of his burial? No, yeah? No. Now, so the emphasis is on the likeness of his death. Is it not so? The, the emphasis is on the likeness of his death. Now, how, is, how, how did he die? This way. Is it not so? It must be united in the likeness. This is the way. Okay, on top of that, on top of that, you know, if you if you if you check the Jewish burial, it's not like we always think that they're buried this way, lying flat. No, not necessarily. Jesus was placed in a tomb. You know, you know, if you look at the Muslim, they they plant their death this way, straight straight down. That's why you know the Middle East people are very different from you know like African or, or the, the 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 East. What is that? The Far East people, or the, even the West, how they bury the dead is different. That's why the emphasis is on is not on, you know, the manner in which the the person is buried. The emphasis is on what? Yeah. Bowing head. The of the dead. Yes, that's the key point. Because if that's the case, uh, which one do you, should you use? Should you use the the Jewish way of burial, or should you use the the, the Western way of burial or should we use the African way of burial? There are different types. But so the emphasis is not on the, 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 the way, you know, the person is buried. The important thing is what? That, oh. And this is how you go into the water. The likeness of the death. Yes. 
And this is how you entered into his death. And then you are buried together. That's it. Yeah? Alright, any other questions? Now, I think we go through this, yeah, because we want to uh, help us strengthening, you know, help us strengthen the ideas of baptism so that we will not forget. And not only that, you know, and, and the more we talk to people about this, I believe that God will give us wisdom and understanding. You know, in a, in a classroom setting, and you don't learn much, to be honest. You don't learn, learn, learn much here. What, what you will learn more is when you actually, what, well, you are talking to, to others, preaching the gospel then God will guide you. you, you you'll be able to... to. What, we have, what we have given you is just the very basic thing. Yeah. The rest is when you, when you preach, then God will give you inspiration. Right. Okay, if there's no question, huh, then we call it a day and we shall pray now.